Hello everybody, I'm ZS Karen Valla from ZK Research and I'm here for week 21 of Real Time Recorded and I'm here with my uh, compatriot Dave Michaels. Uh, Dave, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing much better now, ZS. I, I, it finally happened. You know, we've been in this pandemic for over two years. I finally got COVID. Uh, I, I, I don't know how you've avoided it. I think everyone's going to get it at some point, but, but uh, uh, feels, it's great to be back. Yeah, I don't know how I would it either. My, all three of my kids have had it, my partners had it, half my hockey teams had it, the guys that play golf have had it. So I don't know, maybe I'm just immune, or maybe I've had it, who knows, maybe I had it and I just didn't know. So <clears throat> uh, with live events coming back, though, who knows, we may see more of them. So, um, well, that's just it. I've been traveling and I've been fine, but it was like when I came home is when I got it. That That's the worst yeah. part of the whole deal. You better off well, don't go home. That, that's your trick. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't go home. That's the key. Um, well, this week, Dave, was highlighted by uh, Zoom's earnings, uh, right? This is earnings season now, so we, you know, we've seen a lot of those. Um, uh, the company put up uh, revenue that was roughly in line with three different expectations. Uh, they had their first billion-dollar quarter, which is remarkable that Zoom is a billion-dollar-a-quarter company. And uh, you know, they saw revenue of 12.3%. It saw its gross margin increase in what it's done, the management attributed that to moving a lot of their resources into public clouds that have their own uh, data centers, which obviously makes more financial sense. Um, the, there was kind of some interesting takeaways from the quarter. And one of them I thought was just the shift to uh, large enterprise. If you look, they, they talked about how their, um, the, the, what they call enterprise growth or up market growth it grew 46% year over year which now accounts for about 24% of total revenue, up from 19 last year uh, at this time, and where their down market business was flat. And so the, you know, the growth, you could look at it as 12%, maybe you know, people might have been expecting a little bit more, but certainly in the enterprise space are growing. And, and that seems to be triggered by this land and expand strategy. They've been trying to you know, mine that median space, and they actually called out a handful of customers, Humana, uh, Avis Budget Group, things like that. Uh, Lumio is another one. Um, Team Health, Franklin Covey. They're all started with meetings, and then they added some element to phones or meetings. Uh, um, Team Health, who's an outsourced healthcare company, Franklin Covey, actually adopted their contact center as well. So, you know, the people like Zoom, the broader the portfolio they have, the better because, the, you know, they're able to go in with meetings and then expand to other areas, and it'll be you know, curious to see uh, how, you know, at $4 billion you know, annual revenue, you know, how big they can be. There was extraordinary pressure on Zoom because they've somehow become the uh, pandemic poster child. And, and everyone's looking to see, you know, how they're going to do. There's a lot of pressure on them. You said they were more or less in line, but I, I, and that's true. But I think it's also important to say that they beat guidance on revenue. They beat guidance on EPS. It was small, very minor, more or less yeah. in expectations to your point. But those were wins. And I think that's really important. I mean, we're looking at a company here that was pre-pandemic. Uh, let's see, FY 2020, they did 623 million dollars. Uh, it's like you know, those were those days. It's just two years ago, so far ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, and now you know, it's a 4.1 billion dollar company. So everyone's trying to see, you know, all right, pandemic is winding down, which it really isn't. I just I just had COVID, but you know, but. But there's it a perception that pandemic is winding down. What's really going to happen to this company? And they actually did all right. And I think this is really important because in the bigger context, we're, we've been talking for the last couple of weeks how crazy the market is and how everything is way, way down. And in our space, it's not uncommon to find a company that's down 60 to 80 percent in the past, you know, uh, certainly year to date, even longer. And and uh, it, it's it's been a turbulent, tr terrible time. So I think everyone was looking at, at Zoom what are they going to do? What are they going to do? And I think the important thing here is that Zoom isn't Peloton. I mean, I mean, uh, people are going back to the gym, uh, but but people aren't necessarily going back to the office. We've seen this. We've seen the Apple had to reverse its uh, policy on coming back to the office. You know, people are not quite ready to come back to the office. And as you pointed out several times, ZK, um, it only matters if everyone comes back to the office. If just one person doesn't come back to the office, you're probably going to be using an online meeting. And so... I think that I think this is a really important quarterly result. I think it's pretty exciting, um, and actually, I, I think it really says a lot about the industry. Well, it says a lot about Zoom, obviously, but it says a lot about the industry as well. 
Uh, Zoom is actually looking pretty attractive. I saw this one write up uh, from uh, First Pacific Advisors, and they were looking at it and saying they've never been more attractive. I mean, compared to when they were first public and you know, and, and, th and throughout the pandemic, their numbers are actually looking really good. Reported high gross uh, margins and, and uh, operating margins. Uh, and it's expected to grow at 12.2% CAGR over the next three years. It's a pretty decent story. So I, I think this is a really important quarterly result, uh, more so yeah, than The number usual. Eric gave to for the phone is they're up to 3 million seats of phone, which and that, that, that is phenomenal. And I'm sure some of that was bundled in and things like that. But still, the fact that they, in really a couple of years, they went from zero to 3 million, is, uh, I think shows they're, they're really a good execution company, too. So earlier this month, we had the Infocom conference, ZK, and we didn't really talk about that much at all. Uh, but there were a couple of interesting announcements out of there, one, uh, one from Polly and one from Cisco that I think we should talk about. Why don't you go first and tell us about uh, the Cisco product? Yeah, Cisco announced a new uh, video bar. They, you know, they've been trying to bring the price of those things down, and they've been trying to increase the functionality. They've done a nice job. This one... Uh, I think it's 3800 was the list price, and you know with discounts and stuff, it always winds up being cheaper than that. But uh, it had some interesting attributes. I'm not a you know a big endpoint guy, but I thought this one was kind of interesting. 12 megapixel camera, wide lens, uh, and 5x digital zoom. It, uh, you know, it, 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 it supports two screens natively. So you see in a lot of conferences, two screens, one for content, one for video, so you can use it for. Uh, for either one, you could use it all for content. And it had a lot of the cool kind of Cisco AI features built into it, including uh, speaker tracking. It's got the auto framing uh, capabilities and things. And I think this is a nice option for customers, too, because not everybody wants to buy a dedicated device for a meeting room. We all, a lot of them have TVs in them. And so this just lets you drop it in. And I, I've seen these things. They have uh, literally two cables, right, They, <laughs> they, they that you power and then one cable to plug in and and, and off you go. So I think this, you know, the this trend we talked about with Zoom where everybody's, not everybody's going back to work. The people that do go back to work, though, they do want to collaborate. And, they, and I think you'll see more and more kind of open spaces and offices being redesigned for collaboration. And you'll see more of these being used, just, you know, dropped in wherever you have a screen. Yeah, it actually looked like a really nice product. Now, Cisco's got a pretty broad line now of uh, room devices and personal devices. It's amazing, actually, how broad that line has become just during the pandemic. They've really expanded that whole that whole personal lineup in, the, in these smaller rooms. Cisco, in the past, has been known for large, high-end, expensive rooms, and they've really changed that whole mix uh, as we're moving towards smaller meeting rooms and, and, and of course, desktop devices. Uh, it'll be interesting to see this. I haven't seen this bar yet, uh, uh, but Cisco Live is coming up. I think you'll be there at, uh, in uh, Las Vegas, and and uh, and I, I'm wondering what else they have up their sleeve because they've been kind of quiet. Yeah. Well, it coincided with Snore returning, so there's no coincidence there, I think. So on the uh, the same conference at Infocom, uh, Polly yeah. announced the R30, and, and check it out. Huh? Huh? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> so... Um, if this looks familiar to you, it should because it looks a lot like uh, what do they call it? The P15. Uh, so they came out the P15 a year a year or so ago, and it looks just like this. Actually, the casual observer would see no difference, uh, but the difference is the P, as in the, the P stands for personal, uh, had a different kind of camera. It had a um, uh, meant to be a pretty close to you on the desktop, a personal camera, even though it's a fairly large bar, and. Um, and so the idea was having big speakers and a, and a camera right on your on your monitor, uh, and they found out that a lot of people were buying the P15 for small meeting rooms, and and so they decided to all right we give in we'll, we'll make the R30 this is the R30, and so it's basically the same as the P15. The main the major difference is the uh, the camera. Wait a minute, ta-da! The camera, um, and and the, and it's a different uh, field of view. It's a uh, 120 field of view. It's designed for a bigger room. It's a 4K camera. Uh, this is about $800. Now, the big difference between this, why it's so much cheaper than that Cisco one, is because this is a USB device. This is not a, a yeah. self-standing appliance uh, like the one you just described from Cisco. Uh, they you do need sell a it as a right? self... I'm, I'm sorry, what did you say, Cisco? You need a PC with it too, right? I believe. Well, well that's what I'm saying. They do sell it as a yeah. full room kit with a with a with a controller with yeah. a with a with a PC, and that runs about 2K. So you can get it just as a USB device, or you can get it in a 2K room kit bundle. And um, uh, it basically very similar to the P15. My biggest complaint about the P15 was it had this. It was this size 
and I think the power supply was about you know about half the size. It was, it was, I thought the power supply was ridiculous. So the first thing I did when I got this one was I looked at the power supply. Huge improvement. Uh, now technically no one sees this as on the ground, but it bothered the hell out of me when it was such a giant big uh, power supply. Uh, and so they they really fixed that up and. Uh, uh, I think this is a pretty nice little device. I think it's going to be a big hit at that price point. It's Wi-Fi ready too, um, and so uh, I think it's going to be really uh, uh, a very successful product for for uh, Polly. Hey, Zios, did you happen to catch Ro uh, Rowan's tweet uh, the other day? Uh, Rowan from Five Nine, the CEO of Five Nine, of course, has got a little bit of ex experience with uh, room systems and video systems. He was complaining that room systems are too hard. That the, that that uh, they're all tied to one vendor. And I know, like Microsoft and and Zoom, uh, they both work with companies like Neat and Poly and Logi, but but those appliances are only allowed to have one product. And so if you buy the Microsoft version, it only has the Microsoft version. And if you want the Zoom version, you have to buy a whole different product, even though it's all the same hardware, whole different product, because both of these companies don't want their competitors' products software on there. And of course, Cisco's got their own appliances, and they don't run the Zoom software or the Microsoft software either. And so he was complaining this is too hard. Um, I know you engaged in the conversation, I engaged in the conversation, so what, what was your reaction to that? Yeah, well, I'll read the exact tweet. It says, the experience of joining a video meeting in a conference room today is broken. Why Zoom, Teams, or WebEx have chosen to lock manufacturers into one experience? As a user, this is an awful experience, then he goes on and on. Now, he's, uh, I think he's right up until a couple of, well, up until this last version of, uh, of, of WebEx, and so I was in you know, as we, we talked about before, the WebEx experience or the New York office of Cisco, and they had one of the newer devices there, and, and they have built the thing to run Zoom, um, uh, Teams, Google, and uh, WebEx meetings natively on it. And the best part about it is you don't need a reboot before. So if you use a Poly device and you do a Teams meeting, you and then you want to do a Zoom meeting, you got to actually reboot the device to reload the OS that can handle that, right? Uh, Cisco's built it in a way that you actually can go directly from a Teams meeting to a WebEx meeting to a Zoom meeting to a Google meeting without having to do a reboot in between. So uh, Rowan, uh, um, I don't know why he, he started this. He's an investor in Neat too, so you would, you know, and on the board, so you would think he'd be pushing them in, you know, Neat in that direction too. But he is right that in, by and large, it's still very difficult to do. I think Cisco's done a nice job of trying to make it easier for their customers. In fact, I think uh, from a Cisco perspective, they've actually kind of embraced openness, which isn't something you would have said about Cisco five years ago, right? So, uh, but I, but it is something I'd like to see all vendors do. I, I, I do think having these standalone devices that work with one vendor is kind of cool. Well, I, it boils down to where should the interop occur? Should the interop occur on the device, on the endpoint, the room system, or should, it, or should it occur in the cloud? And so what you just described with Cisco is they're doing it in the cloud, and they'll be happy to do some sort of, you know, they either download the Cisco, uh, the Zoom client, yeah. or they'll, or, or, you know, work with it in the cloud or go through some sort of interoperability in the cloud. Uh, but I think Rowan's saying he wants it in the device level, and that's, you know, technically possible. You could do it with any PC and just load load up multiple clients and have a USB device like this instead of an appliance. But the problem there is then, what about when it's not in a meeting? Because almost all these meeting room solutions have functionality when you're not in a meeting. They either have e-signage. They have a, yes. a, a big a, a big button to join a meeting or, or a voice command to, start to join a meeting. So before you actually get into the meeting, they're kind of still adding value. And so do you do you disable the, the value of the device and or do you wait until you have and have interoperability in the cloud, or do you have interoperability at the device level, which means that you turn off and lose some of these features like e-signage? And I, it's a legitimate issue. I think it's a really complicated issue. And I'm I'm not sure what the right answer is. I do think it's kind of crazy that we have that these vendors like like um, like Logi, Neat, and Poly have to have you know basically separate SKUs and inventory and distribution uh, where they could have a surplus of one and not a stock of the other for basically the exact same hardware, uh, which is probably really frustrating and expensive for well, everybody. Well, Microsoft, you've talked about this before, forces you to have a specific button for Teams, right? So <laughs> the Teams button, you got to have a Teams button. Uh, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't get me going on the Teams button, but yeah. So, so it's a really interesting topic, and I, I don't think there's a really uh, clear silver uh, bullet on that. It, uh, it, 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 we're seeing more interoperability than we've ever seen before, but do we really yeah. have interoperability now? And that it's an interesting conversation. Well, like um, you described, the poor man's way of doing it is I think what you and I both do. I, I think you and I both have desk pros, and I use it as a second monitor. So if I wanted to do a Ring Central meeting on it, I would just run it in a browser or run the client on my PC and use, you know, at least that way, though, I get the benefit of 
some of the benefits of the noise blocking and camera reframing. It's not well. That's the other thing is like that, that web that WebEx bar you described or that Cisco bar you described or this one. They all have USB capabilities. So even though they may be yeah. appliances, they actually have USB pass through capability. So you can always bring in your own laptop into a room, plug in, and start up that way. But it, yeah, it, the, and that's also new. I mean, the Cisco systems, I guess, a couple of years ago didn't have the USB pass throughs. So they've been doing that in the last few products uh, um, generations. So no, it's good for everyone for challenging the industry, though. So I'd yeah, like yeah, it's, 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 he's got to be having fun uh, talking about this stuff yeah. that he no longer has to fix it. Um, well, uh, <laughs> just one other headline we just saw before we started recording here is that the um, uh, Vonage announced that their acquisition with Ericsson is taking a little longer than expected. Little apparently, apparently, ZS things take longer when you are having uh, fraud and, and corruption charges uh, at the parent. But uh, yeah. but it sounds like they're still going to work it out, and they just extended it three months. It it, it actually. It, I've never understood why acquisitions take so long. They always seem to take way too long. But uh, well, there's but, regulatory approval and things like that. You know, Broadcom bought VMware, and you can bet that's going to take a couple of years to go through regulatory approvals. So, hmm. um, or announce it, refine it, anyways. And so the, the interesting thing about the Ericsson Vonage one, though, Dave, is when you look at when, Va when Ericsson bought them, the market was still not quite at its peak in you know overvaluation, but certainly up there. If they had just Waited, I think they could have got bonded for a lot less if they had wanted. This is like a uh, like a Musk Twitter deal, you know. It's like, uh, yeah. congratulations, Mr. Musk, you just bought Twitter. It's like, oh crap, the value's just yeah. gone in half. Now what do I do? Yeah. Uh, there's got to be yeah. some way to get out of this thing. So yeah, uh, the, the markets are crazy. I don't think the markets are going to stay this crazy as yes. I'm pretty, I'm feeling pretty darn good. I think we're going to see uh, a swifter recovery than uh, many people anticipate, but. I'm a, I'm wrong at least half the time, so uh, it's up yeah. to you to figure out when I'm wrong and when I'm right. All right. Well, we'll see about that. I know you're a big guy into crypto and stuff too, so uh, that's another topic, though. All right. So uh, that wraps up week 21 of Real Time Recorded, and Dave and I will be both back next week for week no. 22. No, no, oh, that's right. week Memorial off. Day. Yeah. yeah. So well, unless that's something the... big happens, right? If uh, then uh, the, the you know then we'll be back, but if not, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right, thank you.